This video is how to install Windows 11 as a local user into VirtualBox 7. Previously, I created a video on how to install Win 11 in VirtualBox 6. The procedures for installing into VirtualBox 7 are entirely different. A fix for the Windows 11 freeze in VirtualBox 7 is also demonstrated. Outcomes Download Windows 11 Create a virtual machine for the Windows 11 install inside VirtualBox 7. Install Windows 11 in VirtualBox 7 as a local user. And finally, install VirtualBox Guest Editions in Windows 11. Requirements VirtualBox 7 install. An extra free 4GB of RAM on the host computer as a minimum. 8GB of RAM preferred. Two free cores on the host computer CPU that the Windows 11 VM or virtual machine can use, and an internet connection. The next three slides contain additional sources of info, a list of the software used in making this video, and a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop this video to read the slides. Here I am at the Windows download page. And I'm going to download an ISO file so that I can install Windows 11 into VirtualBox 7. I'm going to scroll down here until I get the Download Windows 11 Disk Image, ISO. Select my download, Windows 11 Multi-Edition ISO, and click on Download. And it says select the product language. You need to choose the same language when you install Windows. To see what language you're currently using, go to Time and Language and PC Settings or Region in the Control Panel. And for me, I'm going to choose United, English United States. If you're somewhere else in the world, you're going to have to pick your own language and choose that. I'm going to click Confirm. Then it says Windows 11, English United States, 64-bit download. Click that. I'm going to store it on my F drive, para, wherever you store it, you're going to have to keep track of this because you're going to have to come back to it. Win 11 install, VBox 7 files, and I'm just going to leave the name as it is, and then simply click save. That's going to take a while for it to download. You'll see right here it's got six minutes left, five minutes left. So after several minutes, I can see that it's downloaded on my host computer. And so now I have the ISO file downloaded to my host computer. In this section of the video, I will create a virtual machine to install the Windows 11 ISO file on. Click on the multi-pointed star up at the top. And you get to a window that says Virtual Machine Name and Operating System. So I'm going to create a name. Call it Win 11 Eval for an evaluation copy. Next item is folder. Let's see where I'm going to locate this. I'm going to locate it at other. VM storage H. Oh, I'm going to locate it on H drive. Win 11 folder. Windows. Create a new folder here. Folder. Call it Win 11 Eval. I'm going to select the folder. The ISO image. I'm going to go to where I downloaded the ISO image. F para project win 11 install vbox 7 files. That's where I downloaded it. Now you may not have the choice. You'll probably have to go to other and then select it. In my case, I played around with this for a while and so it's up here. Next step is to go to Skip unattended installation because I want to create uh, this myself here. And then finally, click Next. Hardware. It says default is 4096 megabytes. I'm going to double that because I've got the extra memory. 8192 seems to run better. I'm going to make sure that I've got two CPUs checked. I can go up to four, but two is good enough for this. And then make sure that I've got enable EFI 
checked. And finally, click Next. I'm going to accept a default of 80 gigabytes. I'm not going to pre-allocate to full size, which means that all 80 gigabytes will be used on the host computer at this time. But doing it this way, it will use up to 80 gigabytes and then only increase the uh, actual storage capacity of the virtual machine only when it's needed all the way up to 80 gigabytes. And then finally, I'm going to click Next. And so here's the summary. Machine name, Win11 eval windows 11 64 bit base memory 8192 two processors 80 gigabytes of disk size so if everything's okay we'll click finish so after the summary finish i'm going to go to the display settings and we'll make sure the memory is at 128 megabytes and what I found out is that with the current version of VirtualBox, currently 7.06, is that the SVGA setting seems to hang up the virtual machine after several hours of running. And that's this setting right here. Changing the graphics controller setting to VBox VGA frees up the virtual machine. And this is also true for a Win 11 machine installed in VirtualBox 6 that is currently running inside VirtualBox 7.06. So I've changed it. Also leave Enable 3D Acceleration unchecked and finally click OK. So one final thing that you may want to check, and you probably don't have to do this, but just to point this out, and I go to Network Settings, and I want to make sure that Enable Network Adapter is checked. In the current download version of Windows 11, it will not install Windows 11 Pro unless there is a network connection. I believe this has something to do with Microsoft wanting to monetize with ads, but that's only my opinion and not a warranted fact. If the network adapter is enabled, click OK. So the next section of video will cover installing the Windows ISO file in this virtual machine that I've just created. So to install Win11 in your virtual machine, go to the virtual machine, make sure it's highlighted, and then right-click on it, choose Start, and then Normal Start. Click any key to boot up. Now this happens real quickly. If you get to the shell window, type in Exit, and then use the arrow key, Reset. And this time, make sure you hit the any key to boot up. So the window setup screen comes up. You make your choices for language, time, currency, and keyboard right here. And I'm going to accept the default, but you can change that according to where you're located at. I'm going to click Next, and then click Install Now. You are now in the Activate Windows screen. If you plan to keep this virtual machine, you can enter your product key. Windows 11 will still go through with a full install, and you can enter the product key later if you wish. Currently, Windows 11 allows you to use a Windows machine without a product key. Without a product key, you lose some personalization settings and keep getting messages asking you to activate Windows 11. But your Win 11 machine will still work. Windows, however, can change its policy at any moment and require you to have a product key. So if you don't have a product key, click on I don't have a product key, and that's the way I'm going to do it. Select the operating system you want to install screen comes up. Select a Windows version you would like to evaluate. I'm going to select Windows 11 Pro. For your information, Windows Pro N is Windows without multimedia, so no music, Skype, video, etc. Windows 11 Pro N is normally installed in the European area. Then click Next. So you can scroll down the license. You know, go over the license if you wish. I'm just simply going to click I accept the uh, Microsoft software license and click Next. Now you have two choices for installation. 
So since this is not an upgrade, I have to click on Custom Install Windows. And then it asks, where do you want to install Windows? I'm going to accept the default. And this will install Windows on the virtual hard disk that was created inside VirtualBox previously. Then click Next. The installing Windows screen will take a while. After each section is complete, a green check mark will show up. I will speed up the video during this section. At some point, Win 11 will restart during the install. Finally, after seven or eight minutes, up comes the country region screen. You can either accept a default or scroll down to choose another country region. I'm going to accept United States and click on Yes. Again, you can accept or change the default in the keyboard layout screen. In my case, I'm going to accept US and click on Yes. And you can make your choice in the Add Second Keyboard Layout screen. I'm going to click on Skip. Now Win 11 will update using the Internet. After the update is finished, you come to the Device Name screen. I will enter Win 11 Eval as a device name. Win 11 Eval. After you've entered the name, click Next. Seem to have just restarted, but I'm in the setup screen. I have two choices set up for personal use and set up for work or school. Normally, set up for work or school uses a domain server, while personal user can be set up for a local user. I will select set up for personal use and then click next. The Unlock Your Microsoft Experience screen gives you information about Windows 11. After reading this screen, click Sign In. In the Sign In screen, there are two ways to sign in. One is with an account from Microsoft. The other way to sign in is as a local user. For signing in as a local user, simply create a local user name. For me, it will simply be Mike in lowercase. Not signing in with a Microsoft account will trigger some runaround screens, but it still works. Either way, hit Enter after signing in. Up comes the password screen. Enter a password in the password box. Then click Sign In. Up comes the Oops screen. Signing in as a local user you get an oops screen and then another screen will come up asking who's going to use this device. And in this screen, enter the local user again and then click next. Now you're going to have to enter your password again. Next and confirm the password. Like I said, Previously, you get runaround screens if you're signing in as a local user and don't want to sign in with an 11 machine with a Microsoft account. But now you've created a local user. Click Next. And it asks you to go through the security questions, one of three. But I'm just going to skip this whole section. Now comes the privacy settings screen. And I'm going to click No. Find my device, No. Scroll down, include optional, required only, no, no, and advertising ID, no. You can, of course, you can make your own choices there. I'm doing an evaluation copy here, and, and we'll probably wind up destroying this machine after a few days. Click Next, and then you can go back and look over and make sure you've got all your correct settings and then click Accept. So now more updates are being installed. 
So the high screen comes up next. Windows will be doing additional setup work, so leave your virtual machine running. Yes, again, this will take several minutes. Finally, the Win 11 install is finished. This takes me about 24, 25 minutes. And the next section of this video will cover the installation of VirtualBox guest editions and increasing the display size. Now, I'm at the Get Started screen and ready to install guest editions. I'm going to go up here to the top, kind of over to the left a little bit, click on Devices, and insert Guest Editions CD image. Once that's done, I go down here to File Explorer, click on it, and then notice right here where it says CD Drive. I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to click on VBox Windows Editions. Now it says you want to allow this app to make changes to your device. I'm going to click Yes. Now sometimes this window doesn't come up. It's welcome to Oracle VM VirtualBox Guest Editions. But if it doesn't come up, you'll notice that down here at the bottom right, you'll see an icon that will make the windows come up. But anyway, I'm just going to click Next. Just going to accept all the default, choose Install Locations, let it do things default. Click Install. And you got two choices here, reboot now or manually reboot later. Well, I want to reboot now so that I can increase the screen size here and click finish. Now I'm going to make the screen a little bit larger. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to view, virtual screen. And it says resize to 1920 by 1080. Sometimes this will be grayed out. In this case, I can go ahead and do that, it looks like it. But a lot of times I, when I've had practice with it, this section has been grayed out. And in order to get that to show up, I would have to go over here to Settings. And then System. And then Display and display resolution. And it doesn't matter which one I would pick because it doesn't have 1920 by 1080, the one I wanted. Once I would select any one of these, I could go to view and then it would not be grayed out anymore. But in this case, I'm going to simply select 1920 by 1080, which is what I want. I'm going to keep these changes. Well, it says 52 by 864. Uh, let's see what we got here. Nope, it's still not right. View, virtual screen, 1920 by 1080. Well, I guess it's not going to make that change. I guess, don't know why. It's the first time it's kind of acted up, and I've run this machine a couple of times. Click View, Virtual Screen. Okay, so now I've got 1920 by 1080, I believe. View. There it is. Once I have it there, Ran into a little few issues here, which I normally don't seem to run into, and I hope you don't run into, but I had to play around with this a little bit, and but right now it is uh, at 1920 by 1080, well, 1921 by 1125 for some reason. Well, let me bring this down and verify that it's view... 1920 by 1080. There I go. Let me see what it says now. Settings. Display. There it says. 1920 by 1080. Okay. So I'm going to have to uh, 
bring this up a little bit. There we go. Sorry for that run around there. But uh, sometimes things don't work out like you expect them to in, in previous practices. So for now, this demonstration has shown how to download Windows 11, create a virtual machine for Win 11, how to install Win 11, and how to install VirtualBox Guest Editions and reset the screen display. Thank you for watching this. If you have any questions on this video, please ask them in the comments below. Also, if there is a video you would like to see made, please let me know. While I can't promise anything, I will try and look into it. Cheers.